Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today it is a gorgeous, uh, real late September day. Uh, it is um, just, just perfect temperature out here. I finally get to wear a sweatshirt. Finally, finally, it's been such a hot summer. And yeah, I know I was in Alaska, so it was a lot cooler up there, but it's so cool to come home and have some cooler weather and you can already start to see the, the, the trees just barely starting to change. So really, really stoked on the fall. We're gonna be doing a lot of fall videos coming up pretty soon. Uh, I gotta get my boat back and then I'm gonna hit the water, uh, you know, probably after this weekend. But uh, I love the fall. I mean, less people on the water, everybody's hunting. I'm gonna be hunting too, because I just got into that. So we're gonna see what, what kind of balance I have with, uh, with those two uh, endeavors. Uh, but yeah, I love this time of year. But uh, anyways, today I wanted to answer a question that was posed to me from a longtime viewer and, uh, and somebody that has a YouTube channel of their own, so you gotta go check it out, Low Brown fishing so one word low brow and then fishing and uh, he asks um, uh, I usually go darker like June bug and he, when he's saying this he's talking about you know clear water with vegetation uh, I want my bait to stand out against all that green background the army wears green for a reason right what what are your thoughts so I'm gonna approach that question um you know we've done a lot of videos on lure color um, but you know just kind of get into that specific question so essentially what lowbrow is 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 asking is he is asking um you know what type of of color choices am i going to be using with you know a kind of a grassy um a bottom grassy background that sort of thing so I'm gonna start off by kind of giving you guys the, the principle that I use to select color, okay? And most of the lakes that I'm fishing are very, very highly pressured tournament lakes. So there are well-known tournament lakes like Chickamauga, Gunnersville, uh, you know, Okeechobee, all, all these different lakes that a lot of people are fishing on. So the fish feel a lot of pressure. And, uh, and so they get a little bit pickier. Now, um, when you're just fishing like a farm pond or, or a small lake that doesn't get a lot of pressure, uh, you know, pretty much it, it's not, you don't need to make it more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, it, it can be very simple. You can go out there with a wide variety of colors and be very, very successful. But when the fishing pressure is high, that's when color starts to get a little bit more important. And in fact, probably a, a great deal more important. Uh, so his thought process, which I like the way he's going with this, is that um, he wants a bait to kind of stand out with the background of the, the bottom or just the background of that environment. So for instance, if you're fishing a, um, a, you know, a, a flat that has a bunch of hydrilla or a creek channel bend or whatever type of structure where the hydrilla is, uh, he's wanting to use a bait that stands out against that background. So something like black and blue, okay? So a black and blue bait is obviously going to stand out against that background. All right, that puppy right there. All right, so that's, that's kind of his thought process, and I've seen situations where that actually is the deal. The way to, to go is to, to do something that is uh, completely different than the surrounding areas. Uh, and, and the situations that I, f I frequently find that to be the most important strategy is when you've already fished through an area with a different color or uh, you're, you're faced with a ton of, of uh, you know, uh, people fishing the same exact kind of color and you wanna do something just completely different. Uh, but my overall strategy for choosing color uh, is actually the exact opposite of, of what Lowbrow does. And I'm not saying that his strategy is, is wrong by any means, um, but this is how I've just always done it. Um, you know, my whole uh, theory about choosing color for bottom bouncing techniques specifically, and also for uh, techniques that are in the water column, but it's just a little bit different, is I want to blend in my bait in clear water situations where the fish are actively using their sense of sight 
to, uh, to, to be able to attract these baits and find these baits, I want to be able to blend my bait in with the surrounding environment. So everybody knows that you want to um, match the hatch with your presentation. And what these animals do, you know, these prey species, whether it's crawfish, bluegill, you know, shad, whatever it may be, these species are trying to blend in with their environment. They're trying to camouflage themselves. That's that's what they do naturally. And, you know, especially like a crawfish that isn't, of course, red or, you know, have some bright accents. Uh, they're pretty hard to see sometimes because they blend in really well. They got those browns and greens and, and it really depends on the environment that they're in. And so I want to do the same thing with my bait. And so in a clear water situation where I've got a lot of fishing pressure on this lake, like, I want to make the bait almost as invisible as, as possible. And I know that goes against, um, you know, what you would think is the appropriate response or the appropriate strategy, but uh, I really do think that it helps me, uh, you know, uh, match the hatch a little bit better. So for instance, so that, that, that uh, vegetated area that you're talking about, uh, you know, fishing around hydrilla or something like that, clear water, um, I might go to a bait like this right here. This right here is actually called Easy Money. Um, uh, this color is kind of a blend of, of watermelon and also green pumpkin. So this is a really good color for fishing around those, those uh, you know, clear water areas with a lot of, of uh, green vegetation, green background, that sort of thing. Um, this is just a really, really good color. And so I'm just trying to blend in my bait with the background of the bottom. And this goes for a lot of different situations. So like if it's a sandy bottom, use something like pumpkin. Um, uh, if it's a, a, a dirty, dark bottom, maybe go to something like a, a, a green pumpkin, which does really well in a variety of different situations. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, if the bottom is really, really dark, start going to like the black and blues or, or you know, like the California Craw is a really good color right here. This is kind of a blend of, of uh, watermelon red. Um, you got green pumpkin and you've got some black in there too. So um, there's, there's a lot of really good accents in there that, to, that blend in well with darker bottoms and also tannic stained water. So uh, in general, what I'm trying to say is that my strategy, especially when presented with, with um, you know, high pressured fisheries is to actually blend my bait in with the environment. And that's because the, the prey species are doing the same exact thing. I wanna make this bait look as realistic as possible. So that's my starting point when it comes to, you know, going to, to a new lake or getting out on the lake for, that I haven't been on for a long time. I start with uh, matching the hatch and just kind of anticipating what the, the prey species in that particular area based on the cover and the, the bottom composition, what colors I'm gonna start with. But then from there, you know, based on my observations and, and just, you know, uh, what I f feel might be appropriate, I'm gonna change the color and, uh, and maybe it ends up being the exact opposite of matching the hatch by the end of the, the whole process. So there's a lot of, of different factors that go into color selection, but that is generally how I begin. I wanna match the hatch and to do that without seeing the forage species uh, firsthand, you have to blend in your bait with the surrounding environment. One thing I wanna to add to that before we leave is that uh, in dirtier water situations where the fish are using their, their sense of sight at shorter distances because of the, the water clarity, um, this is not the same uh, technique that I use I'll, I'll, or the same process I'll use to select color. A lot of times I'm looking for those bold, uh, you know, colors, whites or, or blacks to be able to show up in that dirtier water to just create that silhouette or that, you know, that kind of glowy look in that dirtier water. So completely different process for dirtier water, but when the fish are are actively feeding using their, their sense of vision, that's when I like to use uh, the most realistic colors based on the background that I'm fishing. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, drop a comment below. Thank you very much for lowbrow fishing for all the, uh, the comments you've dropped on all my videos. I really appreciate you uh, watching all of them and thank you for the question. All right, I'm gonna see you guys out on the water. Take care.